So I am Jessica Condit, senior reporter at Engadget.com. I cover a lot of our gaming news, and I am with Howard Marks, co-founder of Activision, and Jordan Marin. You are known as Captain Sparkles, um, and you are a YouTube uh, Let's Player, basically. Um, and so I want to hear how you two met first of all, um, because it seems like you come from very opposite sides of the gaming industry. Um, so I want to hear a bit about that story. Yeah, I guess, Howard, you're probably better at answering that since you're the one yeah, who reached so, out. So it's interesting. Um, my son, who at that time was about nine years old, he was wearing a Minecraft t-shirt. And we basically were um, um, at, the, at the tennis um, uh, camp and one of the guys came over to me and said hey your son likes Minecraft and I said yeah and she, he looks at my son and says hey do you know who Captain Sparkles is and he says yeah of course I know who he is and I, and I looked at him and I said I have no idea who this guy is who is this guy he said ah, I know his his grandmother she's a friend of mine and, 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 and they're great people and, and uh, alright so you know and we talked about it for a few minutes and we walked away and then I went back to home and I went on the YouTube and checked out Captain Sparkles and I saw, wow, this guy is a big Minecraft uh, player. He has a huge audience. This is really interesting. I had no idea that this was so popular. But my kids, I knew they were always watching YouTube, but never paid attention to it. So then I uh, contacted her and left a message and said, hey, I want to meet with your grandson. And she made the introduction. and. There we have it, and we met. So through through grandma, basically. Yeah, it was it was interesting because my grandma was like, uh, "There's a guy who d does video games or something." She's never played a video game in her life. Uh, he's trying to reach out to you about something, and initially I thought it was just a random person had gotten a hold of my grandma's contact information. I was like, "Oh no!" Um, and then my mom clarified it a little bit more, and uh, I reach reach back and. Um, we, we've been speaking since and co-founded Xreal. Yeah, so what is Xreal? Let's talk about that too. So you guys got together, I mean, through, through grandma contacts, as you do, and, uh, and you founded this company. So what, what's all about, what's all Xreal? What do you do? So the goal is to, to build um, mobile esports games with Fortress Fury being our, our first go at it. So Fortress Fury is a one on one competitive uh, mobile strategy game. And um, I came up with the idea because I, I thought, hey, um, what's something that combines a bunch of elements that people really enjoy? Uh, my audience, um, people out there who just like playing games in general. So it has creative elements. Um, you can build a structure and then you're able to battle against someone who's done the same competitively in real time, which the real time component is not something that's extremely extremely uh, common on mobile these days. So we wanted to jump in and try to build something where where we have these competitive mobile esports games where we can host tournaments in person and uh, and build an audience around that. Yeah, very cool. So that's the thing that I, I noticed like looking through some of your websites and everything. Um, it's a it's mobile esports. So obviously there's this this esports market and there's this mobile market and you guys are tackling both of those at the same time with this it seems like um, so can you kind of define for me mobile esports like what that means uh, in general for for the gaming audience um, Howard do you want to go ahead yeah well of course um, esports is a huge business right now and it's actually bigger in Asia than in the United States mm -hmm. and what we observed was that um, as it becomes more popular in the United States, and you have more people who have their own teams. You have more tournaments. Uh, one of the one of my friends is Brandon Beck from uh, uh, who, who built League of Legends, mm -hmm. and I spent some time with him just to understand what this was all about. And it became a much bigger business than I, I ever thought it would be. And the logical for me, the logical progression would be that not only you're going to play forty minutes. Up to, a, up to an hour on your PC for in a tournament or even a, you know any kind of tournament you may want to also have an experience that is short mm -hmm. now on the PC that doesn't exist I mean most of the tournaments are pretty pretty long I mean every time you go on to play a Dota 2 or you play a, a Team Fortress 2 or any of those those games um, it takes 
45 minutes, can take up to 90 minutes actually in some cases. We thought that because everybody has a phone or a tablet in, either in their pocket or in proximity and they have maybe 10 minutes to spare, this would be a great experience. And we thought eSports naturally should migrate towards the mobile devices and that's why we're only focusing on that and we want to have, a, 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 we're, we're going to start small but we want to be leaders in that field. Okay, cool. Okay. So this is something, so Fortress Fury, which is the game, so it has these PvP elements and you can kind of hop on, play around in what, like 10 minutes or something and then get down or? Even, even shorter than that, um, an average game lasts between two and three minutes, so you can be waiting in a quick line for food even, and, uh, and play a match, and then get off after one if you like, or you can play several in a row. Uh, it all happens very, very quickly. You can go back, tweak your, your fortress in a very short amount of time as well, and uh, just very, very short gameplay sessions if you want, but again, you can also stay on for a longer period of time and uh, play consecutive matches rank up, get resources, and uh, keep adding to your fortress. That's pretty cool, yeah. And so, I mean, you guys already have, I saw, like, over a million downloads, and uh, this came out when? Like, just like a month or two ago, right? It's been almost a couple months now. It came out in mid-May. Okay, yeah, so a few months, over a million downloads. That's a pretty good, you know, that's a pretty good audience there. Um, so, Jordan, how much do you think your YouTube audience has like impacted people wanting to play this and download it? I, I would hope quite a bit. I, um, I sort of documented the entire process of development uh, from start to finish. We started developing on August 1st of 2014, so it's been almost a year now. And as we continue to work on it, uh, added in substantial new elements into the game. As it was being developed, I'd make videos on it. I would, I would show people, hey, we've added this. This is what we're planning on doing. I'd also get everyone involved in, in making certain decisions about the game. So I had a, a few videos over the course of development um, where we, we would vote on something like the title of the game, for example. Uh, that was held to a vote initially. Uh, we ended up having to tweak it later on, but we've also had votes on the, the logo of the game, um, the, the app icon uh, for the App Store and the Play Store, and I think that having the audience um, involved from day one, essentially, hopefully built up quite a bit of interest so that when we actually launched, uh, a lot of people went and, and downloaded it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it seems that, uh, of course it would have an impact. I mean, that's, that's your thing. You make videos about games, you make a video about this game, hopefully it'll sell a little more, right? Yeah. Um, and then I wonder, because it seems that you guys have a few other projects going on, like in terms of almost crowdfunding, like how are, how are you funding uh, Xreal, your company, and Fortress Fury? Maybe, maybe so, Howard, yeah. So that's, a, some, that's another innovation. I mean, uh, Jordan told you about the innovation of developing a game with the community, for the community, very tightly integrated. And the next innovation, we funded the company ourselves. So Jordan and I have been the sole investors in, in, in making the game. It's quite expensive to build a game. It's quite expensive to operate a game. And we decided, you know what? What would be really great is if we could actually have the, those players, those fans, become shareholders in our company and offer a piece of the company to them to actually not only eventually hopefully make a return on the investment but also become brand ambassadors for us and promote the game in their own cities for example put together tournaments so the goal would be let's say get 5,000 shareholders and they're all scattered around the country and they can actually become tournament uh, managers make income from that they could also become uh, brand ambassadors help us with marketing and then also help build the company which actually is a great thing and it's a whole new idea. And we, uh, I'm, I'm also the, the executive chairman of Start Engine, which is the crowdfunding platform that you were just mentioning. So we're innovating on how you finance games, because typically games are not financed by venture capital. Typically, they don't like the hit-driven nature of, of, of games. They would rather invest in platforms. So where do gamers go? They, they have to go to a publisher and get in advance and give away the IP rights pretty much forever. That's not necessarily the best idea as well. So if they want to have control of their game and finance it, there's not that many ways to do it unless you bootstrap. Well, here we go. New, new, complete new idea. 
you can go on the Start Engine platform, raise money from your very users, and then you have the independence you need to build your business. That's really cool. I mean, that almost sounds like obviously, you know, crowdfunding, I think Kickstarter, and a lot of users, it seems, especially when Kickstarter first got big in gaming, um, a lot of people that were funding projects felt like they should have more of a voice, you know, in how the game or whatever project actually unfolded. Um, and that didn't always happen. So this sounds like the people who are investing actually do have a little more uh a little more tied to this they have a little more connection to the actual project and maybe how it how it even um, evolves going forward is that is that correct or is it more just like a, a share kind of thing yeah they're, they're actually shareholders of the company right. um, it was made, this was made legal by a new SEC reg, regulation a plus um, in June so before this uh, non-accredited investors weren't actually allowed to be uh, shareholders in in a company, so it's it's a brand new way for people to um, to get involved. Um, they actually hold a piece. So if the company does grow, then they get a, a return with it, and um, it's it's pretty cool for them. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, is this something to compete with Kickstarter, or is it something totally separate? Do you think? I, I don't think we compete with Kickstarter. I mean, Kickstarter did the Oculus Rift, and mm -hmm. I don't think you remember seeing how once they were able to sell the company for two billion dollars, there was a complete backlash Absolutely. from from the backers who said, "Look, hold on a second. We actually were the ones who created from a concept. The, the product didn't even ship. Mm -hmm. It was a concept. We made it into reality, and we did not get anything out of it. Well, guess what? At that time, they had no ability to get um, uh, equity because they were not accredited and then the company couldn't issue the shares. That was not possible. But June 19th, everything changed when the SEC released the new rules. That's possible now. And Kickstarter has made it very clear they're not interested in being in that business because it's a different business. You have to deal with securities laws and equity and, and, and a lot of uh, audits and accounting. Well, we decided at Start Engine, I'm putting my Start Engine cap on, we decided we want to do this. And what our goal is to help people realize their dreams. And we think the game industry is a great way to go. So what would be better than just my company with Jordan, Howard and Jordan get together and show it can be done. Mm -hmm. And you guys have had some pretty good success on the platform so far? I mean, the platform has raised uh, close to uh, close to $20 million in funding. Nice. Most of it went to one company, it's a car company called Elio Motors. But second to that is, 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 is X-Real. Awesome. We haven't really started our, our main campaign yet. We've been pretty quiet, uh, you know, first of all, making sure that we understand how to do it. And soon we're going to be offering quite a lot of marketing, uh, uh, press PR to alert the users that they can come in. Um, if you go in our game today, you'll see a little message that says, hey, come get involved with us, go check it out. And we're still very quiet on financials mm -hmm. because we just want to understand what the interest level is. If the interest level becomes quite significant, we're going to release more information about the company. Absolutely. That makes sense. So anyone, you don't have to be like, do you have to be like this uh, accredited business or something to to give money or to buy shares or anything through Start Engine, or can just anyone get on and have some shares in Xreal? Anybody can do it, and that is the real innovation here. Yeah. Uh, the the seven percent of the country, or f some people even say five percent of the country, that are accredited investors, mm -hmm. and ninety five percent of the country are not. We're going after the ninety five percent, so we're really expanding the opportunity to anybody. Um, you have to be 18 and over, so for, for uh, under 18, the parents have to make that financial decision, of course, but you know, you know, people can use their pocket money if they wanted to. Yeah. And we think it's a great opportunity to invest in mobile gaming early on, so that you don't come in when the company's already a billion dollar value. You come in at a very early stage, and yes, there's more risk, and I hope people understand that, mm -hmm. but the rewards are higher. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, that sounds great. And it, it sounds like Fortress Fury is doing very well as well. Um, so what do you guys see, just kind of final question, wrapping things up here. Uh, how do you guys see all of this moving forward? Uh, maybe in five years, where do you guys really want to be? What do you want to be doing? 
I mean, it would be it would be great in five years if we uh, had several titles under our belt in the mobile esports category, have consistent uh, live tournaments, um, maybe even some sort of structured league for for that sort of thing. Um, but the focus will be mobile competitive games. So. For now, Fortress Fury will be the focus. We'll see where that takes us. And uh, assuming that it pans out well, then more titles in that same sort of category that we'll continue to build over time and uh, keep doing the the tournaments, live events, and um, all of that. Cool. And Jordan, are you going to stay uh, doing Captain Sparkles, or are you going to keep doing those YouTube videos, do you think? Uh, absolutely. That, that's the plan, to keep doing that as long as people are interested there as well. My little sister loves them, so please keep <laughs> doing them. Yeah, please. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Absolutely. All right. Uh, cool. Howard, any final thoughts from you? Well, we, uh, John and I have talked uh, numerous times that, that there will be a day where you will be able to win a million dollars playing a mobile game in a tournament. And that would be, for us, a very key um, element of, of success. 